This is my original loose pen sketch that I traced onto watercolor paper. Of course, I fine-tuned the design during that process. I used the ultra-thin light pad I got back in early May. It was a gift and something I would not have gotten for myself. So when I opened it and said, gee, thanks, honey, I was secretly thinking, why do I need this when I have a perfectly good window? Well, I've used it a handful of times since then, and I'm a lot more appreciative than I thought I'd be. I'll add a link to that video in the description. So, welcome to this steampunk dabbling session at the Inkworks factory. After so much swatching, mixing, and paint pan musical chairs, I just wanted to paint a picture. My intention was for a more involved piece with more line detail than the last couple of pieces. The idea is for a sort of poster slash trading card promoting this imaginary travel destination. A fantastical theme park where airships offer bar service and aquariums feature monstrous cephalopods. A complex where you could ride a trolley to the Museum of Automatons, catch a performance of HMS Airship Pinafore at the GNS Opera House, then have a flipped switch cocktail while flying in an airship. You know, the usual.
I don't buy artist tape from art stores. The prices are ridiculous. I remember checking out the selection at a Michaels a couple of years ago, and the only option they had was for $15. I understand they normally have the Artist Loft brand for $10, but they were out of stock. There's more of a selection on Amazon, but I don't want to purchase a pack of six to get the great price of $3 per roll when it takes me a year to get through one. What you see here is just dollar store masking tape, because that's how I roll. Cheap, just down the street, and with weak adhesive properties. The brushes I used are sizes 10, 6, and 2 round from the Princeton Snap Line. The paper is Arches 140 pound, 100% cotton, cold press. It's half of a 9 by 12 sheet, which makes this 6 by 9. And my mixed brand palette of M. Graham, Daniel Smith, and Holbein watercolors. Now, if only someone would design a steampunk watercolor set. Actually, I've seen some online images of cool vintage kits. Google Victorian watercolor paint box, and you'll see what I mean. There are even some from Windsor & Newton. Yeah, apparently they've been around for a while. Like, since the 1830s. Getting that window background done boosted my confidence. So glad I started with that. In fact, it's probably my favorite element of the entire picture. The easiest part was probably the border scrolling. I have a Dover book titled Banners, Ribbons, and Scrolls. The designs are oldy moldy, but I've found it useful over the years. Those Dover Pictorial Archive books were great to have during my Victoriana obsession. Oh yeah, I was a fan of the late 1800s. Well, not the arsenic or the typhoid, but rather the architecture, clothing, music, and such. You know, 
the aesthetic. Talking about it in the past tense now makes it sound as if I'm reminiscing over my first love after moving on to later loves. Which is exactly what I'm doing. That's not intended to be a wedding cake. It's what's served every day at Harmonia's Tea Room, along with other sweet and savory morsels to accompany the Assam and down the Darjeeling. And it's not limited to afternoons. Oh no. Depending on the hour, you might have ham quichelets and raspberry waffle squares, curried salmon puffs and cheese tweels, or wild mushroom tartlets and creme caramel cups. Yeah, I fantasize about non-stop noshing at the theme park of my dreams. Doesn't everybody?
One of my initial concepts was for teapots pouring their hot brews into a locomotive boiler with a Steam Land is Tea Powered banner. I'm not a tea freak, but I do drink it from time to time. Black, green, or herbed. Hot or tepid. Spiced or iced. I've done the loose tea in a pot thing, but nowadays I'm a... I was going to say tea bagger, but for multiple reasons. I'll go with the phrase tea bag user instead. Harmonia's Tea Room is just one of many attractions at the Steamland theme park. Oh, pardon me. Amusements Emporium. I'd like to do a couple more to form a series of paintings. And I've got to include an airship of some sort in there. Because a steampunk without airships is steambunk.
Who is Harmonia? I imagine her as a kinder, gentler Lady Tremaine from Disney's Cinderella. Okay, she's a little snooty and a stickler for manners, but she doesn't make her stepchildren work in the scullery. She mostly runs things from behind the scenes, but if you're lucky, you may catch her during one of her public appearances, and always in a bustled dress with hair perfectly coiffed. Selfies are fine, but no autographs, please. Yeah, I've thought a lot about Steamland, from the dessert train experience to the cosplay promenade. Yet I don't consider myself as hardcore. There's only one gear after all. And as much as I'd love to say that Steamland is tea powered, even I balk at that amount of whimsy.
being the first of the Steamland promotional paintings, it turned out, mm, okay. I guess there's some steamage going on, sure, but not much in the way of punkage. What would have really sold it? A robot butler. If only I knew how to draw one of those. You know the term retrofuturism? Well, perhaps this can be called future retroism. This is the first piece I've done using my newly assembled mixed brand palette, and I gotta admit, it was kind of thrilling. Pink and gold was the color combination of choice, so this palette had me covered and then some. Which is great, because the green and blue additions were practically last minute decisions. There was indecision over whether to keep the waft of steam above the teacup, I wasn't sure I could pull it off in this medium, but I'm glad it's there. It's a nice detail.
I'm happy to share this advertisement for a possible future travel destination, or in marketing parlance, concept art. So if Steamland is ever actualized, I want in on the project. The sooner the better, because there's some $15 artist tape I want to try. But for now, let's get click happy. Like a tiered tea tray displaying scones, petty four, and finger sandwiches, there's an array of tempting actions to select right below, such as like, share, subscribe, or comment. What would your dream theme park be like? An extreme ride extravaganza or a food lover's mecca? Until next time, think of steam themes and clotted cream in a pink and gold color scheme. Oh, and stay artsy, my friends.